Hi there and welcome to Getting Clean on the Prairies. It is a beautiful uh, June 1st morning here on the Saskatchewan Prairies and I am um, back to work and back from my uh, few days away at the lake and I just wanted to kind of update you on what happened in my garden while I was away. Um, this week we are in for uh, a heat wave is what they're calling it. The temperatures are going to uh, get up to 35 degrees here um, in the next couple days which is in the mid 90s Fahrenheit and that's really that's really unheard of <laughs> for early June and it's really not ideal weather for for the garden or for our crops or anything but um, so I, I need to do some preparing for that heat wave um, and also had to deal with um, some frost damage that I had happened to my garden while I was away. Unfortunately, my tomatoes and peppers did not um, do well while I was gone. I did try to cover them with some protective um, covers. Um, unfortunately, the wind came up and uncovered most of my plants and there was um, below zero temperatures a couple more evenings last week. So. Uh, a lot of my tomatoes and peppers did not make it which was very sad because when you grow your own seedlings from you know from seed and put them out it's uh it's very exciting to see them grow and when you lose all them and have to resort to going to the greenhouse to buy replacements um it's very disappointing it's even more disappointing because a lot of these tomatoes and peppers came from seeds that i got from other gardeners across Canada in our seed exchange so they were very unique and special type plants that I was excited to try to grow and you know you can't usually find those in a greenhouse so so that part makes it very disappointing as well but um, luckily I did have a few um, plants that I didn't get into the garden that were still in my garden shed that um, survived so I was able to replant some of my peppers and tomatoes I did go stop at the greenhouse and pick up a couple more tomato plants and yeah so we just continue on and go with what you have and do what you have to do to keep things going so I'll just take you around uh, show you a few more of the plants that uh, did get a touch of frost but I think they'll be all right and uh, see what else is coming up in the garden so over here I had some squash uh, plants that I had started from seed and I had put in a couple in into these containers. These ones, uh, these two managed to survive the frost. I'm not sure why, but um, they maybe have a little bit of, bit of burn on the leaves, but they look like they're gonna be okay. And over here, this one here was my Burgess squash. Um, I don't think it's gonna come back. I'm just gonna leave it just to see what happens. But I did replant a couple more seeds. And my spaghetti squash was pretty much totally burnt and dead. So I um, had to pull it out. But my peas came through okay. They were under straw here. And I'm starting to see a lot of them pop through. So the peas are doing okay. My beets, carrots, uh, lettuces all are doing fine. I think keeping a light layer of straw and dried leaves on my containers here help protect them from any uh, frost damage. So they are all coming along. I can see lots of little carrots coming here, so that's good. I have been peeking at my potatoes under straw here in the buckets and I see that they are sprouting and some of the plants are starting to peek through the straw here so that's a good sign. As far as the ones under straw here I haven't seen anything yet. This here is one of the tomatoes that got some frost damage but it still seems to be doing all right um, so I will leave it here and replant it a new tiny tim along beside it. So I got some new tomatoes going here. 
I had a couple yellow pears that I had started from seed that I hadn't planted so those got put in to replace what was what was lost and then I went to the store and got some sweet millions and some kind of a paste tomato I think it's called a little nobly so these would be like aroma type tomato so which was something that I hadn't started from seed so I'm anxious to see how those do hopefully the nasturtium that I planted up will come back it took a pretty good hit from the frost and these are some more determinant tomatoes that I replanted and my pepper crop here is a little bit smaller than what I started out with I have five plants now instead of ten but that's okay I will work with these these are all ones that I had started from seed that I hadn't planted out and for some reason a couple of these the ones you can tell are a little bit yellow those are the ones I planted before the frost that um, managed to survive and I think they'll be do all right they'll bounce back as far as my uh, flowers that I have planted here in my lasagna garden bed some survived some did not coleuses I realize are very sensitive to cold these ones as you can see just got totally fried but um, even the ones that were inside my garden shed on a few evenings when it got cold um, did not survive so and I have some petunias that are looking pretty sickly here but I think they'll come back the lupins seem to be okay these are my ornamental grasses my pampas grass that I started from seed sunflowers took quite a hit and fortunately something that I have coming pretty good in my winter sowing jugs is some sunflowers so this is I guess one advantage to the winter sowing jug method is that um, you can keep the plants protected a little longer in those jugs till it's uh, all risks of frost has passed and um, so I'll be filling in some of the spots here with some more sunflowers from my winter sowing jugs same thing goes with the sweet peas these were ones that I had started from seed that are looking a little yellowed from the frost where are they there I have a nice little batch of them coming in one of my winter sewing jugs so I can come and uh, fill those in here as well and the calendula also looking a little yellow but I think it's going to bounce back And over here are my winter sowing jugs that a lot of them are ready to be planted out into the ground and again I'm faced with the decision as to whether it's better to just leave them in the containers until this heat wave has passed or you know risk putting them into the ground and having them be super stressed with the extreme heat so it's very interesting here on the prairies you can go from freezing cold temperatures to heat wave temperatures all within a week or so so it's always a challenge in the garden here on the prairies so as I said it was unfortunate that um, I lost a few of my my seedlings but um, that was kind of a chance I took planting them you know a little bit early um, and then not being around to uh, kind of protect them for a few days when we went away but that's just the way it is here we enjoy going to the lake um, in uh, early spring to because that's when all the best fishing happens so um, it's kind of a struggle between my garden and spending time fishing those are my two favorite things to do so next year I will maybe plan a little bit better and put off putting my tomatoes and peppers out until the first week of June when it's usually pretty safe 
that we won't have any more frost. So I think it would be safe to say that we have passed all risk of frost now for this spring. And uh, like I said earlier, we are now heading into a heat wave. So it's kind of going from one extreme to another. So now I just need to um, do what I can do to prepare these plants for an upcoming heat wave so that they don't get uh, overheated and they're still very delicate as they've just been in the ground for only a week or so. So time to uh, think about how I can protect them from the heat. So that's just a quick update on what's going on in my garden here this spring. I hope you enjoyed this video and will leave a comment. Click on the like button and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Stay tuned to see what happens after uh, the predicted heat wave coming to the Saskatchewan prairies. Thanks for watching.